Well, if all of this was uh, hurting the Wall Street, it had a funny way of showing it today, uh, barely budging. We'll get to that in a second. But Democrats are looking to pay uh, for a lot of their uh, stuff with, well, taxes on the wealthy. But at least they are saying they have to pay for that stuff. Is this the answer? Democratic strategy, Zach Friend. We've also got the National Review contributor, David Benson. And last but not least, the Wall Street Journal's resident genius, Mario Grady. All right. So, Marion, as you crunch a lot of the numbers, they say this is where you can and will get a lot of the money for this stuff. Can that? Well, you know, Elizabeth Warren looks at this and most of the Democrats look at this very stat in a static way. In other words, we're going to charge these taxes to these profits and this is the amount we're going to get. And of course, uh, businesses respond to taxes. So you can't really depend on those numbers at all because investors start making other decisions when taxes are too. Yeah. In the case of Amazon, with the fact that it could be six hundred eighty nine million bucks there, David. I mean, then you start saying, all right, that's cutting into my return. Will I want to invest in Amazon? And then by extension, what do I do in the end? Where do I go? Yeah, but it's in this case, it's, her point is exactly right, what Mary said. That money wouldn't be there because the whole reason Amazon didn't pay taxes is because the, they were able to instantly expense this year in the new tax code a lot of the capex. So if what she actually wants to propose is that we take away incentives for capital expenditures, if she's really willing to do that to the productivity of the economy, there would not be those profits to tax, let alone all the downstream implications for jobs and wage growth. It, it's a just completely unserious idea. All right. But again, one of the things I did point out is that, look, uh, Bernie Sanders was famous for this when his last run that he he said he wasn't going to just tax the rich. He was going to bring it down a little to some of the middle class. So God bless him. He was saying for all his big plans, I've got to find a way to pay for it. Now, whether the math added up in his case a few years ago is just as questionable as what these candidates, whether it does today. But what do you think of the message that's being sent for a general election nominee, not, not, not the, the person who ultimately gets a nomination where this is popular. I actually think that the fact that a number of the other candidates are hedging on this issue to some degree is very telling about how they yeah. view it in the general election, which is to say that you actually see them saying maybe Medicare for everybody that wants it as opposed to Medicare for all. Maybe we shouldn't totally do away with the entire system. But with that said, the goalposts have moved in the Democratic primary. There's no question. Now it's really a litmus test that you have to sign on to this concept. And I think that campaigns are more value statements than they actually are the financial statements in many respects. But we'll see where it goes. I think that, that people are not totally on the Bernie train right now on all the candidates. But, but I think they're all like little cars on that train, aren't they? He I has mean, shifted the narrative. There's yeah. no question he shifted the narrative. But, but I, most of the candidates have something like this in place. All right. So uh, higher taxes, a wealth tax, an asset tax, a, a corporate tax, a surtaxes on people like you over. Well, million. you know, when he when he says that he's going to drill down into not just the rich, but the middle class more to tax them. At least he's being honest. I and mean, he is saying what to sell saying it that is, you'll get more bang for the buck than the extra bucks. Right. Bang yes, up. of course. But <laughs> at least what he's admitting is that he wants the state to own a larger and larger part of the economy, which, of course, is exactly what socialism does. And that's why people are afraid of him, because he's not just talking about, you know, he, he starts with socialism, always starts with with we're going to tax yeah, the rich because they Warren. have too She's much. Going after top companies in this but, country. But that's where, I, that's where I think the distinction between what Elizabeth Warren said today and what Bernie Sanders is saying is important in this sense. The Republican conservatives like myself have been critical of them for not being serious about how they're going to pay for it. Right. But it has to be more than just that. Because one of them will come up with something that in, involves paying that, for it. Very creative ways. I, I blame both sides for coming up with ways to spend more money. Uh, and, you know, raise more money to, to, for that spending, but not to pair that spending. Well, and so if he's w serious, I mean, the last person who serious said, I'm going to raise taxes on middle class to pay for something was Walter Mondale. Right. It didn't go well. You're giving away uh, your age. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to use that same example. Yes, right. but I really do think that we also, as Republican conservatives, speaking for myself, have got to point out that it doesn't work economically. It's not just about not paying for it. It's a misallocation of capital to pull that money from corporations that have a profit motive. This week is the first time I got to hear Bernie Sanders defend the profit motive. But, you know, you could look at it uh, otherwise. Is that if, if, if you could make a credible case for this sort of thing if the economy was doing miserably, right? I mean, but we have record high employment levels of virtually every major key demographic group in the yeah. country. Uh, and, and we have an economy that, that's, you know, 
doing okay. People, so do you want to disrupt that now and with, with some outlandish talk along the way? I think that there's two parts to that. One of them is that we should be realistic and say that this wouldn't pass, right? I mean, it's not going to get through both houses. Uh, people I, I, I always make those assumptions. I, I really don't feel that, a, that it, it really has a high likelihood of, of passing. But the more important thing is that I don't think the economy is working for everybody. The numbers show what, exactly what you're saying, but the amount of economic insecurity that people feel throughout this country is but very real. there's always been economic insecurity. But I think, I, do you think there's as much as there was before? And I'm not not pinning it to any president, any party, any time, but the numbers are the numbers, whether people like President Trump or not. I mean, these are fairly good economic times. These are strong market times. People are seeing it in their portfolios, those who are lucky enough to have them, and they're seeing it in their, in their bosses who right now are adding to their payrolls at a fairly good clip. If that's true, why are his numbers not moving? Well, I think that's the personal stuff. No, I mean, it's a fair, no, 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 it's a, it's a fair I, point, I, I agree with you. But, I, it's, a separate, but it's a separate subject. I mean, it the is a separate is, subject. You're right. And there, uh, you and I talked about I'd say the president would be up 10 points in the polls oh, yeah. on all these cases, if not for all the other stuff. Yeah. But yeah. on the economic stuff. It's, well, I think what, you know, it's good. true that Bernie Sanders is going after the middle class. Elizabeth Warren sort of said, no, I'm only going after rich, ca- rich uh, corporations. But what they have in common is what all socialists have in common, which is that they hate capitalists, but they love capital. But they don't, and they, they don't are salivating it, about this socialism. money. And well, it, okay. It, it pulls well, they, right? They like, okay, but they like a big state, right. and they want money. And she, you know, she's talking about taxing these corporations, but she's just salivating about this $1 trillion she sees out there. I mean, capital they believe... Move, right? They Were believe, you worried that Democrats advocating that, that, that capital moves? Yeah, no, I think that's right. I, yeah. think, I think the point you raised, Mary, is spot on. So Medicare for all polls well, but not when you drill down into the details, when you talk about some of the taxation components of it. So that's, that's why Who I think... Who have you hooked up with? Any I haven't hooked up with anybody really? yet. Yeah, I think Who it's are you a, close to hooking up with? Well, I mean, I have a personal <laughs> relationship with some of the candidates, just from my history, but I, I'm not aligning myself with anybody right now. But I've got to say this, that I don't think that Barack Obama would get through the 2020 primary. Well, I mean, he's warned about He's I, warned about this. I think he's exactly right. Yeah. I think the circular firing squad comment he made is spot on. I think yeah. that this is the one, I think this is a very winnable race for Democrats and we might still find a way to not win it based on some of the things that we're doing. Grab the feet it, from it, the jaws it, of victory. It does yeah. feel uh, appropriate because I remember feeling that way in some of the primaries Republicans have had in recent times that Ronald All Reagan right. wouldn't have been able to get through our own primary. And so now it does seem like they first moved uh, leftward in a sense. And you and I covered the Millard Fillmore race. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thank you very, very much. Very good seeing Thanks. you again.